there. Welcome back to Feast and Farm Cooks. My name is Rachel Ballard and today we are going to tackle easy yeast rolls. Just a dozen, really simple. So if you have been afraid of making bread, I am happier than a kid in a candy store that we're going to do this today because it's so much fun and it's really simple to do. Let me show you what you're going to need to get started. You are going to need, you're going to need um, a cup of water that's lukewarm. And if you haven't seen my video on how to activate yeast, I'll leave you a link right here so you can check that out. So we've got our active dry yeast here. We've got some neutral flavored vegetable oil, any kind of neutral flavored oil. We don't wanna use something that has a stronger flavor like coconut oil or olive oil, those won't work. So just a neutral oil, some sugar and some salt. We have an egg that's at room temperature. You need it to be not ice cold. And about three and a half cups of, I'm using bread flour here, but the original recipe just calls for all purpose. Either one will work just fine. So let's get that yeast activated to start. What you're gonna do is open this with your imaginary scissors. Okay, so you open your yeast and you drop it into the warm water. It needs about five minutes to kind of bloom or prove. So you don't even really have to stir it in, but if you want to, you can. So I'm gonna, I'll stir it in. And then what I'm gonna do actually is take a little bit of the sugar from my bowl over here that goes in the main recipe. And I'm just gonna drop a little bit of that in. Sugar helps to feed yeast. So I'm gonna let that sit for about five minutes until I see it start to foam and I'll know it's alive. Once I've done that, we'll be ready to start. Be back in just a second. So our yeast is nice and foamy and it's starting to kind of get that look about it and that's what we want and we know it's alive. So we can go ahead and put it in the bowl. Then we're gonna go ahead and just add everything else basically. So our oil goes in, then our egg can go in. Very easy. I know everybody stresses about this, but we can handle it. Little sugar, a little bit of salt that we had left goes in there. We'll stir those together really quick and just break your egg up. Make sure you kind of get it loosened up in there until you've got this mixture. And now I have my three and a half cups of flour. Now, every time you bake, it's gonna vary how much flour you need. I'm gonna put in like about three cups of this. I'm not gonna put it all in just yet. Depending on humidity, uh, moisture levels in the air, your flour may or may not need all that the recipe calls for. So don't try to force it to take more flour. If it doesn't wanna take it, if it's hard to get it mixed in, or if it looks really thin, can you see this as we're going? That's just part of the process. And of course, way too thin. So let's just keep mixing a second. Now we're to here and that's more like batter than it is like dough. So we're gonna add the rest of our flour. I'm gonna add about half of what I've got left here. Work that in. We're trying to get it to pull away from the sides of the bowl. And you know, you may be wondering why I don't use um, a stand mixer for this and I have one. I really feel like bread is one of those things that it just should be done with your hands, you know? Um, so you're not ever gonna see me get my stand mixer out for any of this. I actually rarely use a stand mixer. So I'm gonna put the rest of this and you can see it's really soft. See how it tips when I, rolls when I tip the bowl? That's too soft. So I'm gonna put in the rest of the flour that I have in here. Bread is really a practiced skill and one that I think people are, are forgetting to do. They're losing this ability. And you know, I'm 39 years old and I don't have a lot of friends that know how to make bread. So I really feel like it's something that we should bring back into the home kitchen and learn to do well. So work this in. Can you see how it's coming together a little bit better? Don't be afraid of it. Just work it around there. Now, do you see how it's clumping together and it's starting to clean off the sides of the bowl? That's what we want. So it's still gonna be sticky, still going to be quite sticky, but not runny. So here it is, that's how I want it. I'm gonna clean my spoon off here. And what we'll do next, if we'd spray this with a little bit of vegetable oil spray and then cover it with a piece of plastic wrap and it needs to double in size. So that can take, depending on how cool your house is, so mine sits about 70, it can take about two hours for your dough to really get to the right size, so be patient with it. If you put it inside your oven and have your oven turned off, sometimes if that's a little warmer, you can get it to rise in an hour, but I find that most of our home kitchens really need a little bit more than an hour. So, by magic of television, because I know you'd wanna see, I have one that I was rising. This one has been, uh, rising for about, I'm trying to see what time it is, about three hours. 
And that's okay. You're not going to over rise it in the first step. On the second rise, after we shape them and put them in the pan, if you let them rise too long, they can fall when they bake. So you want to kind of be careful then. But on the first rise, if it goes over the hour, goes over two hours, whatever you need to get this dough to the proper size. And it's so pillowy and soft. So watch what we're going to do. We're going to put some flour out here and then we're going to punch this down. We're going to knock out the air and we're going to take this dough out. Now see, it's, not, it's lost so much of its stickiness. Let me set this aside. It has lost so much of its stickiness. Now, one thing I want to tell you here as we begin to knead this is a really avoid your temptation to want to dump a bunch of flour in here. As you knead this and work with it, it's going to become what little bit of stickiness it has is going to fade away and it's going to be really elastic and smooth. So avoid the temptation to just keep dumping flour on it. Now, I just have a little bit here just to keep it from sticking. And let's talk about kneading. You go over, push with your hand, turn, over, push with your hand, turn. And we're gonna do that until this dough is as smooth as a baby's bottom. You want this to be elastic and soft and like, I could do this all day long. I absolutely love to knead bread. Like, it's just relaxing to me. And because I use bread flour, it has more gluten in it. And you're going to feel this become resistant to kneading a little bit more quickly than if you were doing a all-purpose flour. Okay, it has, lower, it has a lower gluten count content in it. So just be patient. It may take, it might take you with all-purpose flour maybe five minutes to really build that up. It's almost impossible to overwork dough if you knead it by hand. It is very possible to overwork it and make it tough if you need it with a machine, like a KitchenAid, okay? That's why I think that you're gonna do so much better at this, especially if it's your first time, if you just do it by hand. Okay, can you see, my bottom of it is just a little sticky, but that's okay. Can you see how smooth that is? It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. There are very few things in the world I love more than bread. Okay, so let me show you how to shape this now. So what I have here for, a, I'm going to be using a 12 cup muffin tin. You can also put these into a nine inch round cake pan and just make balls and set them in there. It'll make two cake pans worth, so that's great. But let me show you how I do this. My mom always did it this way, and this is how the recipe looks on my website, so that's why I'm gonna show you how to do it this way. So you take your hand, and what I really do is I use this part of my hand to pinch these off. I come in and I pick up a little section, a couple inches across, and I just squeeze my fingers together and I get this perfect little ball, okay? And I'm gonna put him on one side of my muffin tin. Now this muffin tin's a little more narrow. This is a USA pan muffin tin and it is so non-stick and glorious. You may wanna pick one up. Okay, see if I can show you. So I'm gonna put this one and this one in here together. When I was a kid, we called these butt rolls for obvious reasons. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pinch, continue to pinch off dough all the way around until I have enough here to fill the muffin tin and I'll be back to show you what they look like in just a second. Okay, everybody is in and some of them are a little, you know, wonky, but that's okay. It's going to be fine. This muffin tin has a more narrow bottom to it, so it's kind of hard, a little bit harder to fit everybody in there evenly. But what we need to do now is let these rise for an hour in a warm place. And so I'm just going to lightly cover them with a dish towel, or if you want to put a piece of plastic wrap on, spray it with some vegetable oil spray before you lay it on top so that your rolls don't stick to it, because that would be sad. So about an hour until they are just starting to kind of come up level with the edges of the tin, or about double in size, pretty close to that. And then they'll be ready for the oven. So I will show you what they look like when they're risen and then we'll bake them. Be back in a little bit. All right, y'all, our rolls set on my warm oven. I had it on from something else. And so I just set them on top of the stove where it was nice and warm and they are doubled in size and ready to go in. Poor little guy in the back, back here, he's lost his crack kind of sad but they will be delicious so a 400 degree oven 12 to 15 minutes until they're golden on top and they'll be ready to enjoy so I will show you what they look like when they come out be back in just a little bit okay y'all our rolls are out of the oven and I'm telling you <laughs> if you want to feel good if you want your house to smell good and you feel all cozy make a batch of rolls it just smells so good in here now this is the secret to the whole thing 
stick of butter, cool butter, not exactly soft, warm, warm enough that you can hold it, and just run that over the top of these while they're still hot. That just gives them such a, it's just so beautiful. And of course, you're gonna put butter inside too. Yes, but we wanna butter the tops of each of these. And they are so wonderful. Let's get one out of here and check it out. Ready? Okay. I can do the rest of these in a minute. Let's take this guy out. And I did not, I did not pre-loosen this. I just want you to see how easily these come out of the pan. Look at him, bless his heart. He's a little crooked. But you know, homemade food, look, look. Oh, homemade food doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be made by you. That's all that matters. Guys, I'm gonna eat this <laughs> with or without butter as soon as I'm done talking to you. But don't forget, please subscribe. I love having you here. You're not gonna wanna miss anything we have coming up here on Feast and Farm Cooks. You can subscribe right here. You can watch another video right here. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.